Hi everyone, welcome back to The Nest. This week we'll have an update on our Stinger tailwheel springs and where you can find them. We'll show you another uh, video from Algae Yates where he builds a workbench in his shop. And we'll share with you some information from Lawrence Eber who flew his Dakota Hawk recently and uh, has a couple pictures to show you. I'll be back after the intro and a couple notes from our sponsors. This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 303DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. First thing I'd like to talk about today is that we've added an airframe accessory section to our web store on the website and in there we have a number of uh, tailwheel selections, tailwheel spring selections. And as you can see, we're offering uh, two different versions here. We've got a single spring tailwheel that is just the spring. Sorry, I shouldn't call it a tailwheel. It's a single spring uh, that replaces the leaf spring on your, on your aircraft. And you can buy that separately. Uh, and that's this one here. And it basically uh, does, comes without the tailwheel. Um, and if you can buy it as a combination bet uh, with our lightweight tailwheel chassis uh, and, and that gives you a complete package that you can just bolt right onto your airplane. Uh, we also offer it as the um, heavy duty one which is the two, two shock unit uh, where we could just buy the tail spring unit um, and, it, and if you've already got a Matco tailwheel it'll attach right to it. But we also offer it as a combination with the six inch tail wheel. So um, they're on the website now, they're available. You can go in there, order it, and we can ship it out. Um, we've got product in stock. So next we're gonna talk, I'm gonna, se I'm gonna send you over to Algie Yates and I'll uh, let you uh, have a peek at uh, what he's doing in building a, a table for his, uh, his workshop. Hi and welcome to the channel. In these videos I show my build of a Fisher Youngster biplane kit and it's not meant to be instructional but it's meant for you to have a bit of entertainment seeing how I go about building this aircraft and hopefully get a few hints and tips that might help you out to build your own aircraft. Let's face it, if I can do it, you can do it. The workshop is in a bit of a state. I've got a whole chunk of wood down here which is going to be made into two eight foot long benches which will be joined together with a short section between to allow me to be able to do both the upper wings so I need to have it longer than the upper wing wingspan because those wings are the longest because they're just about joining the middle so hence the long length and there'll be a bit of a reorganization to allow that to happen okay so I turned all that pile of wood that was on the floor into this workbench uh, this is my home workshop uh, it's effectively a one and a half car long uh, garage uh, and about a one and a quarter car garage width uh, made up as two sections as I said I would with a centre section in so this total length is just under 19 feet so in theory should allow me to assemble both top wings together at the same time down here underneath there's uh, a series of shelves, uh, one sec section here which will allow me to put one wing in, one here which will allow me to put the lower wings in 
and the storage section underneath which allows me to put all the uh, materials in. The bench has been levelled crosswise uh, with a, a digital gauge, made sure it's flat and length to length and to do that each of the legs has got a uh, I don't know if you can see that well, that's going to give a focus it's got its own sort of coach bolt and nut system to allow me to do the adjustment so it's dead flat all the way along top section is three quarters MDF uh, and each of the shelves is just quarter inch MDF uh, We've got a series of beams going across, two by two uh, beams going across here and here at each end to stop it from sagging and those have been shimmed uh, accordingly to allow for, uh, to make it flat uh, where it needs to have that correction and I can periodically check to see whether this has uh, sunk or sagged uh, during the build as necessary and uh, adjust it should I need to by just taking the screws out here, putting in extra shimming or the size depending on what's happening with the uh, with any flex. Uh, this is a dehumidified workshop so it shouldn't be a problem. As for the rest of the reorganisation, well the far side of the workshop there has pretty much remained unchanged as the top end. It's pretty much as it is. Most of the changes happened down this side. Moved uh, my lathe up. Uh, modified the table which I used for doing the tailplane structure and made that a top to go on top of my uh, table saw uh, so it allows me to move the table saw in and out if I need to this will be used for laminating uh, some bits and pieces up as I need to uh, and when I need to and the main bench here will be used for the actual sort of fabrication of large components I have got storage space above which is uh, great for storing uh, other components or smaller parts and things like that and I've added strip lights in the centre here above the bench so I've got good light uh, without shadow for when I'm doing the work in the evenings yeah, that really is the, uh, the basic workshop uh, layout uh, at the moment I've got the jigs underneath here which uh, will be used for wing ribs once they're done I'll move those uh, back to the storage where they've been before and uh, it's going to be a tight squeeze but my, my aim and objective is to uh, be able to come out here and work on the aircraft in my spare time straight after work and uh, not have to go elsewhere to do the construction time which loses time so I should be able to do quite a bit of work in relatively short sections you know, half an hour here an hour there all those little bits add up to uh, allow for a faster build when it comes to actually putting wings onto fuselages and things like that uh, I might be a little bit more weather dependent do that out in the garden possibly uh, or I have to take it to uh, other workshop facilities so I've got the space to set it up. I've got those options available to me. But I really want to try and show that you can build an aircraft in a relatively small space. Okay, so the workbench is done. You're asking a question, when am I actually going to start building uh, the, the uh, Fisher Youngster and what's the state of play with that? Uh, well, you've already seen, if you've gone onto my uh, Fisher Youngster playlist, you've seen me build a tailplane, elevators, uh, rudder and fin, uh, and a few other small bits and pieces and a load of jigs ready to go. So, as soon as the kit arrives, I'll hopefully get cracking and starting doing the build. So, where is it at the moment? Halfway across the pond, probably, uh, between Canada and the UK, and provided the shipping and the lorry transportation which seems to be a bit of a bother at the moment in the UK uh, and customs all play along it should be with me in the next two to three weeks that would be great I can then crack on and start showing you more videos and bits as I start working on the aircraft my initial plans are to start on the wings uh, building spars and ribs and I'm going to change the format slightly so it'll be this week 
type, uh, you know, what I've covered during the week and focus on any particular areas which need to have some focus on uh, or I consider it would be of benefit to you, the viewer, to have particular focus on and an overview of what's gone on during that week because some of it will be fairly repetitive so it might be you know, uh, boring to, to look at building a rib, building a rib so I, I won't show uh, all of those, I'll just show you know, snippets of uh, bits which might be different between one rib and another. So hopefully you'll join me for the rest of the build. Thank you for watching. Bye now. Lawrence Eber sent me a note the other day with a couple of photos and said, I just wanted to let you know that I finally finished my Dakota Hawk number 003 after 26 years of building it. The plane has traveled across the country three times in a moving van or in a trailer but it's finally flying. I soloed my plane on May 4th this year and I flew it hands off, perfectly trimmed. And now I have over 15 hours on it and I've just flown my first trip away from my home airport, Jefferson County to Port Angeles. P.S. The can I'm holding is sparkling water and not beer. I was so happy that it probably should have been beer to celebrate, but then those are the regulations. Signing off, Lawrence. I'm so happy to be able to receive uh, these photos from people that have flown their airplanes and uh, it's always a great uh, feedback for us and motivation for us in the shop to, uh, to see that uh, our kits are being completed and flown and enjoyed. So anyway, we're signing off with that. Have a great day and we'll see you soon with another video. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week to help us out. Please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy. To receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time in the nest.